Welcome, everyone, to the Everything Show, episode 280. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm joined by my producer. Hi, Gloria. Hello, everybody. Right below, I am joined by my director, Connor Farley. Hi, Connor. Hello. Bitches. That's right. And, and we have <laughs> Brian. Hello, Brian. Our in house. What is that? Our in house performer, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Gloria, you have some news? Yeah. Um, I'll screen and share it. Well, actually, I'll read it instead of sharing it. Um, I got some news when I find where to do it. Oh, okay, Brian. I'll be waiting. Where do you? Well, what does Connor have first? I have nothing. Really? Yeah. There's actually no news that intrigues me. So we're talking about everything. There's nothing to talk about. Wait a minute. Hang on. Come um, on, Galore. Ah! Here we go. All right. I had to find a way to get the thing to go off. Okay. Um. Uh. So on Monday Mom. Uh, dot com which is a uh, fan site for the Mortal Instruments fandom. Um, we got some updates about the movie uh, being turned into a TV series. Um, on, on March 5th today, or well, now it's the 6th, so yesterday, Thursday, we got a, um, a blog for, from MondayMums.com um, saying that the Mortal Instruments uh, TV series casting call ad um, uh, on Craigslist in LA. Um, it appears that the cat is out of the bag. Our friends over at Fangirlish linked to, the, uh, to a Craigslist posting for the Mortal Instruments TV series casting call. While it seems a little odd that an ad on Craigslist would be the first to break news, it's not surprising since it is in LA. Check out the link, link here. I posted it and what the casting call portion of it ad says. Sample, Shadowhunter, episode 01 or 1001, Mortal Cup. Uh, pilot, straight to series, ABC Family. So it's going to be on ABC Family. They picked a station. Um, union, um, draft uh, to 2315. Uh, executive producer will be Ed uh, Decker and Michael. Lee's and Majority David, uh, director uh, TBD, writer Ed Decker, casting director Allison uh, Silver Silverberg, and Jonathan Clay Harris, casting associates uh, Susan S. Rock and Justin Kyron, I think. Uh, start date May 2015, so that's when they start filming in May. Uh, location in Vancouver. Um, it's based in New York, so they're going to use Vancouver for New York, I guess. They'll probably do some location work in New York if they have to uh, definitely be in New York. Um, the download, the download the script, go to Sides Express and use script key code uh, S1212. Um, Harry Frey, 18 to 21. So they're changing the ages of the characters. Because in the book, they're teenagers. They're like 16, okay. something like that. But they're changing them a little older um, in, in the TV show. So, K Clary Frey, 18 to 21 years old. Beautiful, fiery, redheaded, creative, and intelligent. Clary Frey is a promising art student whose bright future is derailed when her mother is kidnapped and she learns, and she learns her life has been a lie. Clary discovers a hidden shadow world full of vampires, werewolves, and other unthinkable dangers that she quickly learned uh, to navigate. As she is forced into action, she embraces her newfound po powers and realizes that she will play the central role in the new series regular. Please submit all in, 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 in I think. Um, and then Chase Whalen, early 20s, uh, narcissist, lethally gorgeous. Chase is a determined and expert shadow hunter. A skilled soldier in a war against demons. After his father is killed, Chase, uh, Chase makes, his, makes it his life mission to seek revenge on the man who is responsible. 
After years of being the object of every girl's desire, he finds himself an unfamiliar, in, a, in an unfamiliar uh, position, falling in love with Clary. Series regular, please, you know, same. Um, and Simon Lewis, early uh, 20s, intelligent, very handsome, in a non-calculated kind of way. Simon Lewis is Clary Frey's longtime best friend. Um, he's the first to find humor in any situation. An accounting student by day, Simon spends his free time performing in a band. His loyalty and, his, and feelings for Clary are tested as he fights alongside her on the epic journey. Because of this, he is ultimately tamed, turned into a vampire and struggles to maintain his humanity while simultaneously accepting his fate. The series regular. Um, and then uh, storyline, Clary Frey is a perfectly normal, she's, she's a budding art student who loves spending time with her friends and family. On her 18th birthday, however, Clary discovers she is part of an old, an age-old battle between demons and an elite race of warriors known as shadow hunters. When her mom is kidnapped and her home is destroyed, so it is her, so it is her sense of reality. So it's her sense of reality. Clary must now understand, understand her new role in an ancient battle and come to, to terms. Um, so yeah, she, they basically, you know, we've got the, the, the channel, we got the, you know, the network, we got the, um, the ages of the characters and, and we know that they're going to be casting soon. So cool. I'm a little upset. The reason why I'm happy is because I love that it's ABC family because I'm hoping that that means that it will be kind of pain. It won't show any like vulgar, you know, they won't add any of like, like they did with the vampire diary. They added so much in that story that's not in the book that it was like terrible. It's terrible. I like it still, but it's like, it, I, I want this one to be tamer. And I was thinking if they got it on like WB, they'd probably add stuff to it that's not in the book. And I wouldn't like that. So I think family, they'll, they'll do, you know, justice, I think. So I'm happy about the, the channel, the network. But when it comes to the casting, I'm a little upset because I love the movie casting so well that I'm, a, I'm afraid. Of course, I have enough faith to kind of not really want to be upset about it yet. I can still have see. And if, then if I don't like them, then I can worry. But, I mean, <laughs> I just can't wait to see who they cast as the characters. Like, I'm going to have to get into it. Because yeah. you know, I, I now should I, should I uh, read the books? Uh, yeah. Or I, uh, uh, no movies. My, I read the books. My suggestion is for you to read the um, the prequel story, which is um, the Infernal Devices, which is uh, the great great grandparents of the ones from this mortal instrument. Okay. Yeah, they're like the, the ancestors or whatever, and it's like uh, you know, dec you know, they're decades old older, you know. Um, uh, and so yeah, read those, and there's there's three in that one: uh, Clockwork uh, Angel, Clockwork and Clockwork Princess. Okay. And then the Mortal Instruments is six books. It's uh, City of uh, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, City of Ashes, uh, City of Glass, City of uh, Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. Cool. All right. Yeah. Gonna check it out, and we'll do like a when I get to. If I read the book, maybe sometime in April, I'll do uh, something on that. Uh, Connor, what do you got? Very exciting news that I'm extremely excited about. Um, do you know a young adult scribe, Diablo Cody, has been hired to pen the next draft of the script for the live-action Barbie film? <laughs> I cannot wait. Barbie in a contemporary setting, uh, in you know, with it being Barbie, you know, I it's gonna be amazing. Movie of the year with Ken. And so like, it, does yeah. she become president at the end of the movie, or is she an astronaut? <laughs> it doesn't actually specify. Or a Barbie in the Rockers, or a stewardess. <laughs> I think she will become a model because it's Barbie. I, I she had a time lord. Does she regenerate into all these different lives and, and then just lives these lives out there? <laughs> hey, another one. Another one. People always think about different people could be time lords. I want to see Clara Barbie. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And she could put her in a million outfits. All right. What else do you have? Um, 
Toy Story 4 is to be more of a rom-com than Toy Story 3. What does that mean? Um, I'll read this quote. The third, the third movie ended in a beautiful way and completed a trilogy. I think this movie is not part of this trilogy. It is a separate story, which in turn, I do not know if will be continued. Never begin a project with that in mind. It is not a continuation of the end of the story of Toy Story 3. Temporarily it is, but it will be a love story. It will be a romantic comedy. It will not put much focus on the interaction between the characters and children. I think it will be a very good movie. Wait, what? Basically, who's, the start is... Who's getting a girlfriend? Uh, I don't know. It has Buzz? Specified, it, uh, Buzz Lightyear. And it doesn't say. And I don't think we'll know. Galaxy until Girl. Something. Or something. I think he's oh, Woody. Daddy. He liked Jesse. He was speaking Spanish to her and everything. Oh. Yeah, it's probably Woody and Jesse. Okay. Really? No, that wouldn't No, they were more like brother and sister type to me anyway. Maybe the- Woody will wind up with a space girl or something. That'd be like a weird, you know. All right, what else do we have? We have um, a picture, or two pictures, I should say, of Jared Leto preparing to be the Joker. Uh, can you screen share it? Yeah. Yes. Let us see it. Come on, Connor. Right. Here. Whoa, what the heck is that? Dude, it's, that's what? Bruce Jenner. Oh, that's Terry, Terry. That's Bruce Jenner. Nope. He don't that's drive anymore because he hit somebody. That's Bruce Jenner. <laughs> that's, oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's, joke. that's we've got, Oh, okay. Hair dye and a picture of him looking weird. Strange. Very strange. Okay. Yep. But he that, that, that's that's that. That's it. Okay. That's it. Um, that was awkward. All right. Um, yeah. I don't know how he's going to be in Jericho, but okay. Well, uh, Expendables TV series is in the works. Fox is reportedly developing an event TV series based on the Expendables film franchise. Sylvester Stallone with executive producer alongside regular Expendables producer Avi Lerner and NCIS veteran Shane Brennan. Brennan will serve as showrunner and will write the series alongside Greg Coolidge and Nick Wa- and Kirk That's Ward. Uh, the aim of the blah 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 blah. That's Basically, all the old cool? buggies of the action world being where on a TV the, series. Where, where is the new Expendables movie? They're not going to do it now. I don't know. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Oh, it wait? says here a fourth and fifth installment in the film franchise in the film series Take along with. Female centric offshoot are in various stages of development. Expensive hours. Yeah. All right, thank God. I'm happy about that. Because when I get upset, I'll just pop that movie on. There'll be like no plot and just shooting things. So that's good. All right. The search for Ben Gay. All right, anyway. Uh, what about you, Jackson? Oh, the third Wolverine movie will. Being early 2016, that, be released what, or filmed? Um, to be released, I think. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, the filming will begin in early 2016, a full year out from its current March 2017 release date. Oh, no. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. It says here, Jackman has been busy um, finishing his promotion for Chappie. Interesting. Oh, God. Why would he want to promote that? Well, he's in it. I know he's in it, but why would he want to promote it? Because, you know... It is evidence that it is a shit film. To make money. <laughs> All right, let, we're going to take some bets. All right, how much is Chappie going to make worldwide? Five million. 
45 million total. How much did it cost to make? 200 million? Something like that. I don't know. It's going to bomb. I'm sorry. Daniel? Yeah. Well, I don't know how much the movie's going to make. I'm not sure. It's probably going to bomb. Okay. Go ahead. I don't know. Brian? What's that? Brian? Is it past your bedtime, Brian? No? Wake up, everybody! Come on! Wake up, Louie! Wake up, Brian! Because who idol two is coming? Yes. Get ready. Get ready, mothers. Who idol too, baby? Sing that. Mm. Take care of that. Who idol too? All right. Other than that, I think I have some news. At least I hope so. Let's see. What do I have for you guys? Hmm. Okay, so we had we we I mean, we're joking about it off air, but uh, the guy that plays Norman Bates said uh, in Bates Motel that he wants to be the spectacular Spider-Man. Now he just came out and said it. That could be like a little teaser that he may be the spectacular Spider-Man. Um, don't forget they they he pro they finished filming I think Bates Motel three. I'm sure there'll be a season four. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I could see him being Peter Parker. What do you think, Connor? Oh God. Um, <laughs> Freddie, is it is this Freddie Highmar? I think so. Yeah. He was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, so I'm laughing that he might be considered for Spider-Man. But I remember him as a little kid playing Charlie in um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I guess, I guess nobody's happy about this, then. I don't, I, don't, I don't care, to be honest. Okay, Gloria? Didn't you hear my reaction when you first mentioned it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for Pace Motel 3. Psyched about that. And Penny Dreadful 2. Seeing... What's the matter, Brian? What? Brian, did you have any leftovers? Because there's a whole new cast, baby, for that. He, he would know how I feel then about the whole mortal thing being the cast. No. It sucks. When a uh, when you're used to a certain cast and then they get re <laughs> not just right. one, all of them. Uh. I know. All right. Um, what else do we have to say? Anything else, Daniel? Uh, there's this guy who um he he's making a bunch of you know he he's tell he's telling um how you can how they can um put Sam Raimi Spider Man into the MCU. And he's he's saying some pretty cool things. Like, for instance, one one of the things that okay, uh, Spider Man Three took place in two thousand and seven, right? And and the MCU started in two thousand and eight. And like maybe that we don't see Spider Man because like in two thousand and seven, you know, he almost died and his friend Harry died. Maybe that's what made him. You know, that's what that's what inspired him to hang up his um, tights, as it were. You know. So maybe that's why we don't see him in the MCU. Another thing is, like, he said something really, he said something about, like, you know, like, maybe since Civil War starts, this inspires Spider-Man to get back into crime fighting because it inspires him to, to fight for what he believes in. Yeah. And, like, the fun, well, then, just, like, a lot of things. And I'm, I'm just telling you some of the things that I, I like. And um, one of the things is, you know, that, that, that building that they were fighting in at the end of Spider-Man 3? That could be the Stark building. That could have been the Stark building. I mean, I know these are just a bunch of theories, but they sound exciting. No, what's the okay? Um, um, hey, no, yeah. nothing. Sorry. 
Okay. No, it, it was it was Kiko. Uh, it was the, the, only, the only thing I could say. Who? All right, the only thing I could say is, I've read like thousands of Spider-Man comics, and I think I know Peter Parker pretty well as a character, and he don't give up the tights. He did it once, okay? But he don't just give up being Spider-Man, okay? It's like a huge responsibility. People could die if you don't like take care of these supervillains. So being that he has the biggest rogues gallery in the history of supervillains, like he has basically, the last time I counted, over 400, okay, villains that could appear at any time. Um, yeah, he's not... He wouldn't just give up. That's not believable if it's Spider-Man. I don't care if it's Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield or whoever. Like, he don't just quit. He would have to be, like, in a wheelchair in order for him to quit because it's because of his irresponsibility that Uncle Ben died, you know? And then when he gave up, um, his, he wanted to give up being Spider-Man, something else happened. And then, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen. It doesn't happen like that. So the only time he's gonna stop being Spider Man is if he's dead. So like what would you do? How would you write it? Well, if I would write it, I would write it that of course he was around before they all were around. Yeah, no, exactly. That's what this guy is saying. No, he no, was, no, no. was around in two thousand and seven. No, he was never before. gave up he never gave up being Spider Man. He was just he's still doing Spider Man. You know, only what? thing is uh, he would not. He, he's still doing Spider Man. Like he's still being Spider Man. I wouldn't have you know um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really comfortable with him being in Civil War because I know what the comic was and that was to reveal his identity to the world. So I, I would think they would put him in there to fight Captain America and, and Iron Man and say, hey, you idiots, like you heroes, what are you doing? Like type of thing. But yeah, and, Okay, no, so. just, I know we know it's not going to be Andrew Garfield because he was like fired, and thank God, in my opinion, thank God. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I I went to a friend's house and he kind of force fed me Amazing Spider Man, and I was like, okay, I'll watch this piece of shit. Whoa, man! But okay. all right, but you know, so I watched it and uh, it was okay, in my opinion, it was okay. It wasn't as good as the first three. 